Uh, all right. So let me just show you some things that happened over the weekend. Uh, you'll roll the, the drone shot here over uh, London. There was a massive, massive pro-Palestinian London uh, rally in London. Uh, and it was... Um, I mean, London's lost. London's lost. I was just there, uh, and uh, there were parts of London you just didn't go to. It's no-go zones. It's like Paris. Just no-go zones. Look at how many supporters of the Palestinians there are. You cannot have a nation that is divided between life and death. Can't. And I'm sorry, but if you're choosing Hamas, you are choosing death. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. It is so very, even, I don't know if you heard this, Hillary Clinton came out and said, anybody who's asking for a ceasefire for Hamas doesn't understand Hamas. I mean, Hillary Clinton came out and said that. And it's right. Meanwhile, here in America, here's a uh, UMass teacher that will not condemn Hamas. Listen. You want to Why? I'm not. Look, as, I, as I tried to explain. There's no explaining. Will you condemn terrorism? You're a professor here and you won't do it. Okay, but I'm do you think not... the Hamas attack was terrorism to begin with? What's that? Do you think the Hamas attack was terrorism to begin with? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Like, I think that there's... How do you, I, how do you define... Look, as something that's in the... Is that in the, a freedom? Something that's in the Jewish Voice for Peace statement about this that, like, has really resonated with me is that reality all begins on when you start the clock, right? And so if you start the clock on Saturday, reality is going to look one way. If you wow. start the clock, you know, in, like, the weeks prior, it's going to sound a different no, you're way. you're trying to justify terrorism. If you, no, if you start the clock, you know, in 1948, it looks a different way. You're a professor. Will you condemn terrorism? I'm not... This is... This conversation is it's not It's a yes actually, or no question. It's not a yes or no question. This is you think terrorism is justified if it's against Jews? Is that what you're saying? So, uh, so that's putting words in my mouth, as you know. I'm asking you to say yes or no, and you can't do it. Because you're a professor. You're smart enough to know that. Okay, more. stop. This is amazing. This is amazing. It doesn't matter where you start the clock. Somebody that walks into an innocent family's house and guns them down, rapes the children, kidnaps people. I don't care when you start the clock. That's terrorism, period. That's all it is. It's mass murder. It's psychotic behavior. It is the embracing of death and everything that is evil. Just like you can start the clock on, uh, on uh, you know, September 10th, 2001. You can start the clock on September 11th, 1972. And it's still mass murder, still mass murder. We have to be very clear, and these people who have been playing the word games with us are very dangerous at this point. Your soul, truly, your soul is in jeopardy now on this very issue. You can want peace. You can uh, worry about the Palestinians. I prayed last night. My family got down, and we prayed last night for the Palestinian people. I don't want any of them hurt. But I do want the psychopaths that just revel in blood to be dead. I do. So now you have this huge rally in London. Let me show you what happened in, German, in Germany. Here are cut eight German protesters chanting in Hamburg. Look at this. Allah Akbar. How do you think this is going to end? This is what happens when you just let anyone in that doesn't share your culture. How do you think that's going to end? In the most disturbing, I've got a few cuts of this. This is the most disturbing. Cut five. This is from Russia. A Muslim mob goes into the airport in Russia seeking to hunt down passengers from Tel Aviv. 
They storm the airport. They're looking for any Jews. Here is, look at this. Here is uh, cut six. The Russian mob surrounding and questioning a suspected Jew. I'm Uzbekistan. I'm a Uzbek. Hey, make sure no one walks past us. Are you trying to mess with us? Calm down, I've got his passport. So this guy is... This guy is surrounded by, what would you say, 50 people, Stu? Yeah. Surrounded on all sides. They've taken his passport. They've taken his phone. Get his phone. Get his phone. And they're accusing him of being a Jew. I don't know. I don't know, gang. How far are we from World War II? Final one. Here's the Russian mob firing warning shots at the police, not the other way around. That's the mob shooting at police. Trying to get them to abandon their post at the gate of the airport. This is Russia. Now, what do you think has empowered this? This is empowered because Vladimir Putin met with the leaders of Hamas. I think it was Friday. Hamas released the Russian kidnapped uh, individuals. So they're back at home in Mother Russia. Do you think that maybe... Russia is on the wrong side. Do you think you're far from another program in Russia? This is why Israel exists, and it must. Meanwhile, Kamala Harris was on 60 Minutes. And here's her message to Iran. What's the message to Iran? Don't. As President Biden said, just don't. Exactly. One word. Pretty straightforward. Oh, I bet that chills him to the bone. So where do we go from here? Really, it's really, it's simple. It is really, really simple. For those of us who haven't closed their hearts to the Palestinians or to the Israelis, we haven't closed our hearts because we're angry at everything that is going on. Look at, look at what, how you're being pushed. How is it in 2009 I was warning about anti-Semitism, that we would see, this is a quote, we would see the hatreds of old rise again. Remember how they used to make fun of me always having Nazi symbols and things on my chalkboard? Maybe now they're beginning to understand why. I wasn't comparing people to Nazis. I was saying at the time, this kind of philosophy comes from Marxism. It comes from collectivism. It comes from do the duty of the society. In societies that are collective like this, mobs are allowed to form like this because it's what's good for the majority. And sometimes the majority goes insane. That's why we are a nation of the individual, not the majority not mob rule. But look at how the mobs have gathered around the left. It's all mob behavior. And like I just said, what do you think that that happened? Well, how did that happen in Russia 
where they'll just throw you off a roof or just shoot you someplace and nobody's going to ask any questions. How do you think you're going to get away with that? With all the airport security and your face on it. You were fine. The state's not going to do anything about it. Because the state most likely agrees with you. The state can use you as a useful idiot. What has our government done? Every time there's a mob on the street, what happens? They dismiss it. There's no police. There's no FBI informants among the... Have you ever heard of an FBI? Well, we had several FBI informants on the street. I haven't heard that ever. The only time I hear that is when things look a little suspicious for January 6th. If that was a legitimate mob, they all deserve to go to jail. Those who were doing, uh, you know, damage to the building and breaking the law, hurting policemen, which didn't happen. We now know. Thank you, Blaze. So, what are we creating here? I contend we're creating the same exact scenario. Let me give you something that maybe maybe we should pay attention to. I don't know. Illegal border crossers have just surpassed 10 million people since Biden took office. That's our guess. We don't know. 10 million people now have been reported to illegally entering the United States since January 2021. This is the largest number in American history. 10 million people. So you know that is 3 million more than New York City. 10 million, you're starting to enter Los Angeles territory. You're in one of the top 10 cities in America, top five cities for sure in America. And we don't have any idea who they are. Well, we kind of do. We kind of do. Remember, they're all good, hardworking families. Hmm. According to a, uh, to a source inside the Border Patrol, the influx of special interest migrants, I'll give you the definition of that here in a second, uh, continues. In fact, 100 Syrian and 50 Iranian nationals have been apprehended by the Border Patrol since the beginning of this month. 150 Syrian and Iranian nationals have been ap- apprehended, have been caught on our border in the last, what is it, the 29th? The last 29 days. Now, how many have crossed? Oh, by the way, these are not families. These are individuals coming in by themselves. The Biden administration would say, well, this is because, you know, there's, there's war in that area. Then why aren't you coming with your family? Why are you coming just by yourself? All of you. All of you. 